Um, can you give us some examples of some paranormal claims that involve linguistics specifically? Oh, I think if you look at most topics in pseudoscience and the paranormal that skeptics are interested in, I think they can be applicable to, to linguistics somehow. Uh, but as for, you said paranormal investigations specifically, I think probably electronic voice phenomena is the most common one that I deal with. Uh, people call them EVPs and that's a, a claim that you can record voices of the dead and so you'll see on TV shows like Ghost Adventures and Ghost Hunters, people running around with uh, little recorders and just asking questions into thin air. Uh, you know, uh, who's in here with us and do you like me and, and silly questions like that. Uh, and then playing back those recordings uh, and hearing cross-modulation or hearing themselves talking or hearing just general noise uh, and finding signals in that noise. Uh, and it's pareidolia, basically. They're, they're finding language where there isn't language. So that's probably the most common thing that I encounter. Have you discovered any ghost languages yet? Ghost languages, not so much, but Bigfoot language is uh, something that I've come up against. A, there's a, a guy called R. Scott Nelson, and he... Actually, there are some recordings back in the 1960s called the Sierra Sounds recordings. Uh, and a couple of guys went out camping and recorded all these sounds of Bigfoot. To me, it sounds like other forest animals, not, not a Bigfoot. Uh, I, I just tend to think that you need to find Bigfoot first and then you need to analyse the language, not the reverse. Uh, but anyway, there's a guy uh, called R. Scott Nelson and he's gone in and looked at these Sierra sounds and he's transcribed them. Uh, so he's a crypto-linguist. He used to work for uh, the army, uh, but that is not someone... Uh, linguists who work with uh, languages that haven't been decoded before are, are anthropologists, basically. So not someone who's worked to, to decode um, codes for the, the army. It's a completely different thing. Uh, but anyway, he's gone in and looked at all of these sounds and broken them up into what he thinks are words. And uh, there are other people out there who've written Bigfoot dictionaries too. And uh, usually there's a bit of mental illness that's associated with some of these claims too. But other than that, no, no ghost languages, but there are certainly claims that animals have languages. Um, during the Second World War, uh, there were uh, there was research into Nazi talking dogs, so claims that dogs could be able to speak. They were trying to teach dogs how to speak. Uh, then there might people might have heard of uh, Jeff the talking mongoose, which was um, an alleged uh, creature that existed in England, um, a, a mongoose that could talk and, and uh, could speak different languages. And I think, uh, just from my research, that it was the people living in the house at the time that were um, just telling a good story to the media, getting some media attention. Uh, then there's Clever Hans. Yeah, I'm sure you've heard of the, the horse that could um, perform mathematical equations and um, it was an intellectual horse. And there was another horse called uh, Lady Wonder who, who was a psychic and, and could also communicate with humans. Uh, so yeah, there are plenty of claims out there of uh, even objects that can speak to, maybe paintings, haunted paintings that can talk and cars that can communicate and plants, of course, talking with plants. So, yeah, lots of claims about animals and inanimate objects being able to talk to. What, uh, what, what projects are you working on now? What's, what's happening in, in your world? Well, I've actually just finished two projects. Uh, one is a, an e-book that I wrote for the James Randi Educational Foundation that's called Haunting America. And uh, it's a compilation of investigations I've conducted across the states into uh, a number of famous haunted places like the Winchester Mystery House, uh, Waverly Hills Sanatorium. So all the places, again, that you'll see on Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. And uh, I've uh, just gone and found out, um, well, written about the folklore and then found out the facts behind the legends. And so that's been really interesting. Uh, and another book that I've written is called God Bless America. Uh, and that's coming out in September. Uh, it's available now for pre-order uh, through Amazon. And that is a book about uh, quirky minority religious beliefs and practices in the United States. Uh, so I get up close and personal with the Amish and fundamentalist uh, Mormons, uh, voodoo, Santeria, uh, Satanism, and Scientology. Uh, so I go and investigate those belief systems and uh, actually experience them too. When you say you, you experience some of these, um, in, uh, I'll, I'll just pick um, Satanism as an example. How, how did you go about experiencing that? Oh, well, you picked the one that I didn't experience myself. It's Satanists are, hmm, uh, they don't get together 
uh, as Christians do in, in churches, they uh, might perform rituals for psychodrama. So they, they don't necessarily believe that they're performing magic or that there's anything uh, supernatural about it. But usually it's just for, for getting their frustrations out. Uh, so if they, there's someone they dislike, then they might curse them. But it's, uh, it's really no more than, than us using some kind of performative and saying, you know, I'm, I'm just, it, it, there's nothing magical about it anyway. Uh, so that, yeah, that was the one that I didn't get to see, but I did research uh, satanic rituals extensively. And so I've written about uh, what an average satanic ritual would be like. What, what would you experience, you know, from everything from a woman, a naked woman um, being an altar uh, through to uh, an imitation of the Black Mass and, and all kinds of crazy things that, that they like to get up to. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I can't wait to, to get those, for those to come out. And for me to read them. Oh, I, I hope you'll enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm.